thank you so much for being here. Um, as a child, I was convinced that NASA was watching me with some kind of high definition uh, <laughs> ability to radar and was seeing me sin. I literally spent time thinking they have seen me masturbating to gay, to gay pornography and that's going to go public someday. I spent time worried about that. Our lives, the 30 people you just heard from, you heard from people who did not know who they were. Who, you, when they discovered their sexual desires, there was a problem. Something was in conflict with them then. Most people, when they discover their sexual desires, oh, okay, this is just something new, and you move on, and at some point you date, you get married, and you move on with your life. When we discovered ours, whenever that happened, there was a crisis. And anybody out there can say, you shouldn't have to have a crisis. It's not a crisis. Guess what? It was. It doesn't happen publicly when you discover something like that about yourself. That happens by yourself. Your parents aren't even involved. An all amount of people from the outside trying to say, it's okay. All, but no, it wasn't okay for me. I wasn't okay with that. Not because of what someone else said, no, because of what my convictions were. I did not want to be gay. I, didn't want, I had no desire to have sex with men. I was just sexually attracted to only them. This is not about sex. This is about identity. This is about emotions. This is about knowing who you are. Our sexual desires bubble up out of who we are. And sexuality is much more fluid than we thought. And we can't have it both ways. We can't have you're born that way and it's fluid. Right? I mean, you can't just decide what point you're trying to make and then make that argument. No. There, this, this can change. God created males and females. Those are the two identities. And if that is not how you experience your sexual desires when you first found yourself with them, my heart is bleeding for you because I know what that feels like. Everybody that stood up here knows what that feels like. We have no hate. We have compassion. Right. When people are confused about their sexual identity. It's just, we've experienced a solution that's not on TV. What right do California politicians have to say that we can't find happiness right. the way that we wanted to? We all tried finding happiness at some moment in our lives. You heard the stories of trying to go down the road, and whether it was an inch or 25 miles of homosexuality or transgenderism. It didn't work for us. One part of it didn't work for us, don't you understand? All right. We didn't find happiness there. Maybe you will. We did not. So is it okay in California? to discriminate if it's just a super minority? Come on, come is that on. the ones we're going to discriminate against? If it's only a few people on, with a certain on. mindset, and we'll just discriminate against them because they're not going with the narrative that we're supposed to be going with today. That's, right. well, that's what's happening right now. Yeah. I was suicidal at 17 because I had walked into a Christian bookstore with a ball cap on, sneaking around, trying to find if I could find any book that would give me any hope that I did not have to live a sexuality that was in conflict with my personal convictions. I found none. So I walked out of the Christian bookstore suicidal. Those books, are they exist today. I have many friends that have written those books. I'm writing one myself. And they existed. They're on the shelves of bookstores. Thank God. If AB 2943 passes, those books get ripped off the shelf. Come on. Fortunately, when this happened to me at 17 and I walked out of the Christian bookstore, I had a family who loved me regardless. And when I broke down and told them what I've been dealing with all these years, 
they had compassion, they said, we're going to get you some help. They took me to a counselor. Not some weird form of abuse that is being touted out there that I still haven't met a single person, even though this is what I do 40 hours a week, no, 70 hours a week. I have not met a person who has endured any kind of therapy that they're saying out there is what happens to people. I had someone sit down with me that's professional and help me figure out where my life went away I didn't want it to go. I unloaded pain. He, he ministered life to me and he kept me alive. And after years of pursuing, uh, uh, the, of reading all these books that gave me life, the, seeing the counselor for five years weekly, and then having a faith community that came around me and some great Bible teaching, I found myself being sexually attracted. It was a miracle. I had no attraction for women. Found myself being attracted to this girl with a sparkly belt who always liked to play with her hair across the way, and I've been married to her for 12 years now. She is my favorite person to be around. I'm in love with her. We have a great sex life. We somehow came up with four children. If I have problems in life, it's there. That's what is my challenge in life. Freedom is possible. And of all places, California, that is forward-thinking and wants to make sure that if I, if I wanted to identify as a toaster, I would be more supportive. <laughs> I mean, wow. So, come on, California. Come on, lawmakers. Don't have to eat your words in six months after we raise up hundreds and thousands of people like us because they are out there and have no idea. radical transformation in their sexual identity, it was not because they focused on it and tried to change it. It was because they encountered Jesus Christ personally. And if you walk that road long enough, all kinds of things in my life, in your life, get transformed and we experience the, the love the peace, the freedom, the joy that Jesus died for us to have. Thank you so much for being here today.